educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. We got about 25 minutes to go until the opening bell, and markets continuing to accelerate to lower prices right now. You look at an S&P negative by 54 points. That's 1.3 percent. NASDAQ 100 down more than 2 percent right now at 13,086. I mentioned at the top of the hour there in the update, we're down more than 5 percent in the NASDAQ 100 from where we were on Friday. Shouldn't be surprising if you've been following the FANG stocks in terms of the pullback that they had. It's remarkable the pullback we've had in some of them. Look at Apple. We were just trading at 132. You're trading at 123. Talk about giving up $9 from the spike high we had on Friday. Microsoft quite a pullback as well from 254 to 244. All of these tech stocks accelerating on that miss of the jobs number on Friday morning. And since then, it's been a slow decline. Tesla shares. Let's jump over to Tesla for a moment. Continuing to slide. So Elon hosts SNL. We'll jump over to Dogecoin in a moment as well. Elon's out there pumping Dogecoin again this morning on his Twitter account. Tesla shares, though, they're dealing with some China woes uh, in a big way. Tesla, whoops, down another, what is that, almost $50, $46 about, trading at 584 Tesla, now you back things up. We're up to 900 This could be an A to B, C to D down, folks. If it is, you got about a three. $160 A to B leg from 900 your B point is about 540 so you're looking at $360. If your C point, and we'll see how we trade as we come into this 540 mark, we're going to be at 580 today. That is ripe to get tested, folks. You see the volume we had. Now, this is a weekly, the week of March 1st, the week of March 8th, both of those lows down there. We had $236 million and $250 million at those lows. We'll see how we come in today, likely to get some acceleration with some moves today in volume. And let's just jump over. Didn't plan it, but let's jump over to the Tesla shares in terms of what we have going on tesla falls as china sales dip um yeah and they talk about dogecoin as well we will talk about that one but here's the one to really pay attention to for tesla china's passenger car association said tuesday that tesla sold 25,845 locally made vehicles in april a 27 percent drop from march not what you want to hear reuters reported separately that Tesla decided against acquiring more land next to its Shanghai plant as U.S.-China trade tensions undercut plans to turn the site into an export hub. That's a double whammy, folks, in a big way. You're selling less cars, and you're coming to the conclusion that trade tensions are posing a potential threat where you're not even going to purchase land right next to your plant to maybe grow that as a hub. Uh, yeah, that's that's what you're seeing, and you're seeing it in a big way. And guess what? It might continue from there, folks, because you can't overstate the two of those stories. They're selling less cars, and it's not always about what you're doing in the past, right? But if they're not going to acquire land next to that Shanghai plant, if you remember, part of the big ramp up in Tesla was the acceleration that they went from number one, becoming a profitable company, but they also had so much good going for them in China, the world's biggest country that could accelerate things in a big way. They had built that plant in China under the time expectation they had everything firing on all cylinders and that might be reversing folks we might be seeing it happen all at once now why not we'll lead it off with Tesla and we'll go right to Dogecoin so Dogecoin spikes after Musk asks whether Tesla should accept it the, the expression I love folks people do it all the time in life um, politics it happens ridiculous levels is people just ask questions, right? I'm just asking questions is the phrase. Well, Elon Musk is just asking question, folks, whether he wants Tesla, whether you want Tesla to accept Doge. Uh, four hours ago, using his Twitter account, he's got 53.9 million followers, and he's just asking the question, folks, whether the public thinks that the company Tesla, which he runs, should accept the crypto coin Doge. Here's my next question. Do you think Elon was long or short Doge going into that tweet? Yeah, we know the answer, right? Uh, really interesting, the, the, the volatility and how cryptos is playing out. And he's playing a fine line here in terms of pumping this thing, and he's doing it in a big way. But there's your spike on that tweet, folks. You have Doge go from 46 
to 53 in a heartbeat. And since then, we've given back most of those, but we're still up a few pennies from there. 49, if you remember, we came into SNL at about 71 cents. I believe it was. There's your drop off May 8th at about 11 p.m. You drop from about 66 cents. We hit a low of 42 cents uh, the next morning, and we've been chopping around there. But Elon back at it on the Doge Coin Express. Uh, be careful out there on Doge, folks. Um, Elon, I mean, We'll see how that plays out, but I imagine he is long doge before he sends that out. Maybe he has no position, but he's definitely not short, folks. He's well aware of what's going to happen in that market when he sends out that question tweet. 2.2 million votes as of uh, just now, and that tweet will stay up there for you to vote on if you'd like for 24 hours is how it works. Okay. What else we got going on? Let's jump around to some of the markets here and take a look. So S&Ps, we're coming right back down to where we were last week. Pretty remarkable, right? You put this thing on a daily, two big pullbacks. S&Ps have been bumping up against this line for a while. Look at this trend line, right? Now, that doesn't mean that he can't continue to bump up against that line where we are. But right now, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. But again, all things in context here. We're going to tie back. I mean, you're only going back a week ago, folks. May 4th, you were trading with a low of 41.20. Okay, point being, if this is really a pullback, you don't pull back from levels that you were trading at five trading days ago. Um, we'll see where today leads us. Two big days in a row. We haven't seen two big red days like this. You look on this chart in a while. We're towards the upper boundary line. Now, let's just extend the lower boundary line. Whoops. Oh, boy. Okay, let's add that one back. Uh, whoops. You know what I can do? Control Z. Edit undo, got to love it. Extend it to the right is what I wanted to do. And you're looking in an area, folks. We make that challenge to the lower boundary line, 4,000. Well in play of where we're looking at there on the S&Ps. That's 126 points from where we're at. Now, NASDAQ 100, quite a different story. You just, I mean, the, 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 high, the, the high point of the acceleration you originally had up to September in the NASDAQ 100 is 12,465. You're talking about 600 points below where we're at. That also correlates pretty closely to the lows of March if this thing really accelerates. Now, we chopped around a bit at about 12,750. So somewhere in that area, I think, is where this thing might stop. That's 300 points, folks. Uh, yes, 300 points from where we're trading at right now. But guess what? You're going into the morning session down 274 from where we open. We're currently at 13,083. And as I said, we just gave back 5% from the spike high we got Friday morning, basically just two trading days ago. All right, jumping over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, a little bit of volatility, pulling back a bit, 55,545. Gold contract pulling back a bit. We've had quite a run off the lows back to March, correlating to the lows of early March, giving back a bit. Gold's off about twelve dollars at eighteen twenty-five this morning. Silver off about sixteen pennies. Silver just continues. Look at this consolidation on a daily. Uh, up near the upper boundary of twenty-eight. Silver sitting at twenty-seven thirty-two. And let's check in on that VIX. We got 16, 16 minutes to go until the opening bell. Quite the spike low. We got 15.38. Remember the stories all coming out? Huge wagers on the VIX. Maybe there are hedge plays talking about a VIX getting over the price point of 25, I think was that big uh, debit call spread in a VIX, pushing it from 25 potentially above that level. Well, folks, we've risen from about 16 to 22.50 in a matter of two trading days. And uh, we'll see how we pick up on the open. But it doesn't look to be losing any steam just yet with the S&Ps down 56 points. And we're coming into the opening bell. Basically, a pre-market session lows of 41.27. Over in Europe, tough numbers. DAX down 2.4%. FTSE down 2.8%. CAC rolled down 2.3%. Nikkei down 3% as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to Kevin Hicks. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, 
educating investors. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. A little bit of a sell-off in gold right now. We dropped about $20 from where we were trading at just at 7.30. Gold trading at 18.23. You're down 8 tenths percent right now. You back things up on a daily on gold. You see where we're giving? I mean, you know, it's been quite a run on gold here. You back things up and just even put it on a three-year weekly. Okay, gold, you run from a low of the low 14.50 up to 2089. I've talked about it a couple occasions. You bounce off the 618 retracement. That 618 retracement correlated exactly to kind of the consolidation we had back in early 2020 of where we were. And you're bumping right up into that 382 of 1845, pulling back a bit. But we'll see how that trades out. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Folks, every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern time, Kevin Hanks, Alex Coffey, the team at TD Ameritrade, Fast Market. They're talking options. They're talking trading. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I think we got nine out of ten companies already out, but we got some still still got some companies coming up this week, along with we get some good economic numbers. I think we get our retail sales on Friday, CPI data out tomorrow. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Interesting day setting up here as we uh, – some pretty substantial follow-through from yesterday. So I want you to think about something. Yesterday morning at about 8 o'clock Chicago time, 9 o'clock Eastern, the NASDAQ stood around 13,650. And now we're 13,060. So we're down from the start of trading yesterday or pre-trading. We're down about 600 NASDAQ points. So pretty sharp, interesting sell-off that it hasn't even been 48 hours yet. So this could be an interesting trading day today as uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if this market can bounce off some of it. But this is a pretty substantial um, sell-off here, really focusing in the NASDAQ, although it hit everything, really. Yeah, I mean, that spike, I had the NASDAQ, I have a chart of the NASDAQ 100 here up on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin, and from Friday spike, even if you go, we're down more than 5%, man. I started the program off with it, right. Kevin, because I was saying the same thing you're saying, man. Just big numbers, you know, and we all see it with the NASDAQ 100. When things are good, it accelerates in a big way. We saw some of those tech stocks, you know, building it up to some of these highs we had. And then, yeah, more than 5% from 13,818, even that spike high on Friday. And really, it's only been two trading days since then. We're going to open the bell. We'll see where we go. 13,105. Uh, Kevin, I want to jump around today just for a moment. You know, I know 
I've heard you say many times the the analyze tab and then the options statistic page is what you love to take a look at on some of these equities. Um, I'm jumping around here, but even like, you know, a stock like Tesla. Now, Tesla's trading big today, right, Kevin? They had some action in China. They're trading lower. But I have the, the option statistic page up here. You know, you have calls, you have puts. This does a good job even um, of talking about how they're trading in the delta. When you're looking at like some of these equities in particular, Kevin, um, and I'm pulling up even the ES futures right now because you can see that they actually have statistics that are that are registering already in, in there. Um, what do you love to look at this options statistic page? Because I know you love this page. You love the analyze tab. Could you talk about it just for a little bit on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin? You know, the Today's Option Statistics page is a great way to look at information that you get, that, that you derive from the order flow. And if you look at the left-hand column, it gives you, you know, the, the, those first three lines. It's the 52-week high in implied volatility. It's the 52-week low in implied volatility, let's say in Tesla. I'm looking at Tesla's screen right now. And then Perfect. the... Uh, one, two, three. The seventh number down is the actual implied volatility. And then that third number down, the current IV percentile, that's the key one. Because that takes that seventh number, the implied vol, and gives you an idea of where it is on the scale from highest to lowest. And if you look at Tesla's implied volatility right now, just over the last 52 weeks now, Tommy, it's in the 12th percentile, which means implied volatility overall is pretty low, right? It's at the low end of the range. So that gives you an indication of what's happening with implied volatility. Then if you go, that is a great way to look and judge and measure implied volatility. It shows you the high, it shows you the low, and then where it's trading now, and then where it sits on that scale. Then you go over to the right column and the sizzle index. All that is, is what, what sizzle does, it takes today's volume in options and in stock and in everything, and it, it, and it compares it to the last five trading days. And it, you can see, is it going up? Is it going down? What is that doing? It's really unusual options activity. It's, a, it's kind of an indicator for some, for, for some options activity. And then that middle segment is a great way to look at what volume is trading. Is it trading on the bid or the ask? And at what level is trading? So that's just a great way for really intermediate to advanced traders to look at what is happening with with, with the options and what effects are they having um is the over what effect is the overall trading they having on these options uh so that is no, listen, a great I, I just, way to measure. I, Go ahead, Tom. I just learned a tremendous amount there myself, Kevin. That's awesome because I was not aware of even comparing those two, the, the, you know, whether that IV percentile, and it's all about, you know, this is implied volatility, folks. You better have it on your radar across the board. Um, now, what I happen to see, just jumping around, Kevin, like the ES this morning, so they have statistics on there. And so you have on the bottom sec section of the kind of that middle area, um, you just have numbers already, but you, you can see how many could put and calls are trading in the variety of delta areas right so there's a yeah. lot that are getting traded right now just with a low delta um do you and this is it i have no idea maybe that's kind of a meaningless maybe that's how it goes all the time but when when there's so much trading uh, basically with small deltas are those out of the money options do you look at anything there for the distribution of where what's trading on the delta of some of those as you get into those equities you can look at those although i can tell you from historically is that it stays pretty consistent in that most, the lion's share of options data or options order flow or options um, volume is traded in out-of-the-money options, at or out-of-the-money. So delta between 41 and 60 and lower, right, down to 21 to 40 and 0 to 20, that's the delta of the option you're trading. That's where the lion's share nice. of the options are traded, in the money options. That, those are 61 to 80 and 81 to 100. Those are in the money, and they just don't trade as much. So you'll note that's the main takeaway from that column is you'll notice the lion's share. And it's a learning event right there. The lion's it, share of options, order flow, or volume is out, at or out of the money options. 
it, it actually surprises me, man, how uh, how big that lion's share is, even when I have it down. But it makes sense. It does. Uh, we all know out of the money options, you know, whether you're trading, whether it's credits or debits, whatever it is. Uh, so, Kevin, jump into we got about a minute left, uh, two minutes left to talk to you. What are you guys talking about today on the program with everything going on? Today, we will trade Electronic Arts, EA, in the, in the first block. Then we'll look at Fubo, the, the streaming TV service. And then we'll look at a name that's been down the last couple of days and on a big downgrade yesterday, and it's going to be down again today, and that is Facebook. Facebook, after hitting a high of you know 326, is now going to be slightly below $300 to start the day. So think about that. $27 off of its high after earnings. So we're going to look at Facebook in the third segment. It should be a lot of fun. Well, I imagine you'll have a market that might be moving today, Kevin, when you guys are doing your program between 11 and 12. Listen, thank you so much for that education, folks. Now the demo account, the Think platform. Give it a try. Check out Fast Market every trading day at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Kevin, thanks so much, man. Have a great show. Thanks for having me, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Take care. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollars worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar. Silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have markets open. We have the S&Ps down about 53 points, 1.3 percent. We basically open a pre-market session lows. The Nasdaq 100, <clears throat> excuse me, down 1.9 percent right now, 13,096. The Dow, which had been the strongest, Dow reaches. That's interesting. No, where are we? There we go. 35,000 was the high print. We're down 650 points just like that. All things considered, though, we're pretty much just back on the Dow to where we were trading on Friday, which is remarkable. The Russell down 2.3 percent, 2157. We'll jump to Bitcoin. Bitcoin dropping a little bit, down about 800 bucks, 54,880. Gold contract dropping down $18, 18.19 right now. And on the opening, notes and bonds getting a little bit of lower price, higher yield right now. Jumping over to where we are in terms of the yield on the 10 year, you're talking about a yield right now correlating. Come on, where's my number? Excuse me. About 1.62%, I believe, is the number on the yield on the 10 year. Can't quite pull up the chart for some reason, uh, but a little bit lower price, higher yield as we come into the open. You see it. We just dropped basically five ticks from 915. We dropped from 132.18 to 132.13, and we are looking at 1.629%. So we're at 1.615, I think. So about a tick, tick and a half. We've risen in the yield of the 10-year. And let's jump to the volatility index as we have the market maybe catching a little bit of a bit here on the open. The VIX. 2251, and I say a bid, right? All things considered, but you did just have the S&Ps bounce at 9 a.m. We were talking about a price point of 4123. You're up a solid almost 15 points from that price level at 4137. Tech stocks down, down only 1.7%. We've now risen 70 points just like that from 13,065. Okay, let's jump around to other stories we have going on. We'll jump to still earnings uh, season, and let's start it off with Simon. So Simon Property says shoppers are getting back to malls. Be interesting to see how that mall space plays out in terms of they were already dealing with woes, the mall space, how they reshape a mall in America to, to you know, get away from the footprint and the real estate that some of these companies in retail did not need, maybe building out some of that area. Simon said Monday that sales and shopper visits are improving week over week, but is still being conservative in the outlook because it's difficult to know what's going to stick versus what's a short term boost. We're, we're in for an, an amazing time of volatility, folks, because markets are very good at pricing future growth. And what's going to... One of companies going forward is pricing in future growth because of what you just saw there. It's difficult to know what's going to stick versus what's a short-term boost. It could be what's a short-term pullback, depending on the company you're talking about, right? Some of the work from home companies, maybe you're gonna see a company like uh, Zoom that might see a decrease. Well, is that decrease gonna be a short-term decrease, right? And then everyone's gonna get back to hanging out on Zoom in some way or fashion, even after we get back to seeing each other in person. Um, but nonetheless, you have revenue falling to 1.24 billion from 1.35. Base minimum rent per square foot ticked up. 5607 to 5576. Uh, and I believe they're trading. Where are they at this morning? I thought they were lower. Yes. Down about 3.3%. SPG is their symbol. Let's see how they open on that. So last night from 12833, you're trading at 12244. This company has been a rocket ship from $60 basically in November. So you're still sitting basically right near all time highs on Simon. Okay, what else we got going on? We had Palantir out with their numbers, 49% revenue growth for its first quarter, software and analytics tools for the defense industry and large corporations. They said it expects to bring $360 million in revenue in the second quarter compared to $344 expected, so they beat there. They earn $0.04 cents a share versus the $0.04 expected. And let's see how they're trading. PLTR, I believe, is their symbol. And you're down 2.7%, but you're getting a little bit of a pop. This thing really got ahead of itself up to $45 back in January. You've traded straight lower. And this morning, I mean, look at that. You trade down to $16.35. We're now up to $17.87, but still down about 3.3% on their earnings this morning. And this market, it's trading lower. Watch out, folks. s and is down about 55 right now. Let's see how we go throughout the day. Okay, what else we got going on? How about L Brands? They're going to spin off Victoria's Secret. I have some L Brands, just for disclosure. Uh, this company has been a rocket ship in a big way. Had some actually before COVID in my account going in. Um, they've been dealing with woes in a big way. So you had L Brands. They are the owner of Victoria's Secret and Bed, uh, excuse me, Bath and Body Works. I always think Bed, Bath and Beyond because their symbols are um you know, their names are so similar. L Brands really spikes to 71.35 yesterday. You look at this low. 
Now, let's just back it up a three-year weekly, okay? You got a rise in this equity going back to prior to COVID. You rise from a level of about 17 bucks all the way to 24, give or take. There was some optimism there that they were going to spin off Victoria's Secret, Secret to private capital. They were going to retain some position in there. COVID comes out. That deal potentially going to fall through. You spike to $8. We're now sitting at $71. A remarkable run for this stock. So, they're going to spin off Victoria's Secret by August, hoping to nab higher valuation. They said Tuesday that they're going to spin off Victoria's Secret brand rather than selling it. The company said it received interest from and held discussions with multiple potential buyers, but its board concluded that the spinoff would fetch more value than a sale. Uh, the transaction in which Victoria's Secret and Bath & Body Works will become two separate publicly traded companies expected to close in August. Uh, the market loving that idea. That's what they've been thinking is going to happen probably for a little while. And in the last 10 months, they've made significant progress in the turnaround of Victoria's Secret business. Really interesting to see how this plays out, right? The market, all excited that they're going to sell it off to private capital, retain a portion of it. That falls apart. You go to $8.00. They get their act together, they cut costs, and what do they do? They spin the thing off when they're trading at 70 bucks for a greater value for shareholders. Um, and here we go. So Al Brands restarted talks with potential buyers for Victoria's Secret after a sale to the private equity firm Sycamore Partners fell apart last year to the, due to COVID. The deal would have valued Victoria's Secret at $1.5 billion. Sycamore sued L Brands last April to terminate the deal. Now, April's a different world, folks. Remember April? It's only a month into COVID. Everybody was panicking. We had no idea if vaccines would even come about. Sycamore said, no way we're taking on this thing right now. That was not the plan when COVID hit. That would have given the private equity firm 55% of Victoria's Secret for around $525 million. It argued that L Brands violated the terms of the agreement when it failed to pay rent and furloughed workers, which everybody in the retail sector was doing in the month of March and April. L Brands averted the legal battle by basically calling them off. But since then, since then the management team has called out the growing momentum at Victoria's Secret. Analyst at Citi and J.P. Morgan had recently valued Victoria's Secret at $5 billion as a standalone business. Remarkable, right? They were going to sell it off at a value of about $1.1 billion. They were only going to retain 50% of it. They were going to retain 45% of it. Excuse me. They were going to sell off 55% of it. Nonetheless, what do they do? Sycamore sues them. They say, fine, we're not going to battle with you. We'll keep it. They turn it around. That was in April. It's May. 13 months later, that business is five times valued what it was worth at the time. And L shares, uh, you know, showing that in their stock in a big way. Now, right now, you're looking at a company. You get into the fundamentals on that Analyze tab. I believe you're talking about, yeah, $18 billion company in all. Bath & Body Works, the reason why they wanted to spin these companies off. Now, I'm going into a bunch of this equity, but it's a strong equity. Now, a lot of growth already in this thing when it goes from 8 bucks to 70 um, but the reason why I was in it, even going into COVID, two strong brands. There's only one Victoria's Secret in the world. Didn't think that that was going away anytime soon. Remarkable that that brand in and of itself got down to almost a billion dollars when you think about the notoriety of such a brand like that. But it was weighing on all the success of Bath & Body Works. We're going to spin them off. Looks like Victoria's Secret at about $5 billion. That would be Bath & Body Works at about $13.4 billion. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's up. up. S&P's down 50. We got the Dow down 330 right back in three minutes are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the bay area including the surrounding st petersburg tampa and clearwater markets tiger real estate llc is a firm that has extensive experience in the tampa bay area whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property tiger realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the tampa bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels from the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. s and is down about 50 points right now, jumping around to what else we have going on. Virgin Galactic, those shares are lower after another quarterly loss and no date set for next space flight test. So Virgin Galactic delivered their results after the market closed yesterday, announcing that it is yet to set a target date for its next space flight test, which the company previously planned for this month. Seems to be some problems going on. Uh, reported adjusted EBITDA loss, 55.9 million, down from a loss of 59.5 in the previous quarter. Stock is down 24% this year, having dropped 70% from the highs. Some of these stocks, space travel stocks, maybe getting a little bit ahead of themselves. From 62.80, guess what, folks, today? Yeah, we're down 10% dropping. I mean, this thing, my goodness, right? I guess the the the, the next stop is going to be like ten bucks. We're at sixteen right now. I mean, you could challenge some of these lows. Maybe we uh, maybe we stop or we get some resistance or support. I should say maybe we get some support down at about the low of fourteen twenty. Um, maybe we get some support um, down at some of these lows. But it's tough territory right now. And any time that you just have no date, no expectation, no future outlook in terms of what's going on. Um, you have their president of space missions and safety said on the company's conference call with investors that the uncertainty stems from a potential wear and tear issue. Um, they don't know what's going on. Potential, right? Identified last week, the aircraft that carries the spacecraft before the launch. That's what they're talking about. The part in question was scheduled for maintenance in the fall. Um, and now they're studying that to determine whether we need to take action now. They're going to report back to the market next week with an update on the schedule implications for our next flight. But burning money, and they're not sure when they're going to start pushing out next flights. The company booked zero dollars of revenue in the quarter, as it did the prior quarter. They had about $617 million in cash on hand at the end of the first quarter, down from 666 in the fourth. I mean, they're burning 50 or $60 million, right? So they got about a quarter. So they got about 10 quarters left of cash before they'd have to go to market. And as you expect, you're lower on that news this morning um, for Virgin Galactic. All right, what else we got going on? Let's take a, some of, just uh, a look at some of the stocks in terms of how those FANG stocks are reacting this morning on the open. We have a little bit of a pop going on. Um, look at this. What is this. What is this going on? The stock, talk about an acceleration. This thing's really accelerating. Look at that. We just traded from 14, so it's not out of the woods just yet. We were down at that level. Remarkable. I didn't even see that because it didn't give us, did not give us that print. What did I do? When you put it on a weekly, did it not give us that print? What's our low there? 
1427. You actually got down to that level on that spike, which is remarkable. Look at that. I was talking about 1421 was where we, the low I talked about. You got to 1427 today, and we're accelerating higher. So maybe that's a max pain situation down at that area, and it does have a little support at that 1420 area, um, which is right where it traded to pre-market. You're up almost $2 from that level already. Okay. Jumping around to some of the stocks, let's see where we're trading this morning. NASDAQ 100 getting a little bit of a bounce. We're down only 150 points. Look at this, from 13,065. Don't call it a comeback just yet, but we're up 150 points almost from where we were trading at in the NASDAQ 100. That's a full percent that we've claimed back. NASDAQ 100 now only down about 1%, was down 2%. S&P's down about 1% right now. The Dow giving up 330 points still, not quite the same bounce. Your volatility's in the NASDAQ. Look at that volatility. Let's see how some of these bank stocks are trading. Microsoft shares. Catching a little bit of a bounce to 244. You're still down about $10 from where we were trading at on Friday. Apple catching a little bit of a bounce as well. Nothing too crazy, though. Apple down 2.2% still on these numbers. Google shares down 1.7%. Kevin talked about Facebook. Uh, down 1.1%. A little bit of a bounce as well. Let's check out Amazon shares. Amazon down only 6 tenths percent. Now, Amazon. You start getting back down to $3,000, folks. If you are a long-term investor, I was talking about it last time it was down here. I didn't think we might get back down here ever again um, in March. But, geez, Amazon just gave up almost 400 bucks from where we were trading from 35.54. That high just recently is April 30th. We're only 11 days into May. 31.70 is the price. But Amazon pretty strong considering how the tech stocks are trading down about six tenths percent and jumping back to Google Google's been one of the strongest surprised that's down about 1.7 percent because we're right near the all-time highs you're only 150 dollars from the highs that we had in Google up there on April 28th let's jump to Twitter shares TWTR keeping the likes of Facebook quite a pullback there as well they trade lower on their earnings we're continuing lower the amount of equity some of these the amount of market cap I should say or price depreciation some of these companies have given back i mean you go to twitter we're back to october prices right i mean check out apple apple shares we hit a low this morning of 122.77 you're talking about we're back to august 21st for apple just all of this growth accelerated in a big way in a lot of these equities. Uh, Microsoft shares, not quite the same. We've accelerated. Google is through the roof. Uh, but even Amazon, back in Amazon up, quite the consolidation. Amazon shares, we are back to a price level right now of July 9th. July 9th, folks. But Amazon, I mean, we, it was a one-way rocket ship from, I think the low was 1626 during COVID. Let's pull it up. What do we get to? 16.2603, and you were trading at a price point of 3,500 by September, from March to September. But we're right back, as I mentioned, quite the consolidation. And yet again, we I mean, look at this high. We had a high of 35.52. You trade up by less than $2 above that high and then trade lower. Folks, areas of support and resistance, just pay attention to them in your trading. It's another perfect example. You know, if you're long Amazon and you're long Amazon on a short-term basis, you better, you better be careful when you get to this area, right? This is an area it has to trade through. Well, what happened? It's showing some weakness at that area. Now, the whole industry is showing weakness in this area of lofty valuations. But not a coincidence that Amazon rises to within $1.75, basically, of its all-time high. And since then, we've given up almost $450. Bucks. Let's check in on Tesla this morning. Tesla shares down 3.2%, getting a little bit of a pop on the open. Look at that, from 578 to 610 this morning uh, on Tesla. And why not? Let's check in on Doge. Doge trading at 15, uh, excuse me, 50 cents on Doge. And folks, I laugh. Please, if you're watching this program, do not trade Doge. If you do, trade it for the, the span of like five minutes or 10 minutes, because I imagine in the long run, all right, if you just joined the program, I talked about it in the beginning of the show, five hours ago, this morning, you had Elon Musk just asking questions, folks. He's just asking whether you want Tesla to accept Doge. He's got 2.4 million votes almost in the last six hours or so. You can vote on that on his Twitter account, which has 53.9 million followers. He's just asking questions. But guess what, folks? It's a manipulated market, and he's almost like admitting it in that. But that's, that's the game that's being played right now. If you don't know that, then you shouldn't be playing that game in Doge. And Doge, you know, I got some great emails. got an email yesterday saying, what's the difference? You know, Doge versus Bitcoin, right? They're speculative, they're crypto. There's a huge difference, folks. One of the things I replied in one of the emails yesterday after my shows, yesterday morning, you can always shoot me an email, folks. Tommy at TFNN.com uh, was saying there's really no 
functional use for a Dogecoin. There's not programmers that are facilitating Dogecoin use to be able to use at retail partners. Tesla might be the only one, but it's just not happening. Whereas Bitcoin, you can use Bitcoin for a number of transactions. There's going to be retail merchants that are using, whether it's PayPal or Square. You might begin to be able to accept Bitcoin as payment facilitated by those online payment portals. Not happening with Dogecoin, folks. Dogecoin, it's a hot potato game. Person who ends up with it last might be the hot potato that ends up with Dogecoin when it reaches zero. But if you find somebody else, it will take it off your hands for more than you paid for it. It's a dicey game. It's interesting. Volatility is there. But it's especially interesting when you got one of the richest people in the world basically using his Twitter account to pump up the Doge on a constant basis. Quite a time to be alive, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Still time to call. 877-927-6648. Give me a call, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. S&P is down 41 points right now. That's 1% right on the dot. Tech stocks continuing to rise. NASDAQ down less than 1%. NASDAQ 100 down less than 1% right now. You were at 13,065. We've risen more than 160 points off that low right now, 13,229. The Dow still at lows, down 354 points. The Russell accelerating. The Russell has gained 42 points from the lows. That's 2%. The Russell just popped from where we were trading at, at about 9.15 this morning. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. The Colonial Pipeline, pretty remarkable, right? Gas stations run dry. Folks, if you're anywhere in 
where that pipeline could go. Um, Florida, one of the areas, depending on where you are, I encourage you, if you have the ability, stock up on a little bit of gas. One thing we learned during COVID, right, things can just kind of come out of nowhere. Um, there was time, when, whether it's toilet paper, paper towels, just even water. Remember those stores? Um, one thing I kind of learned um, through this is, we take all of that so for granted, right? We live in America, everything is at our fingertips. Um, in Florida, we go through hurricanes occasionally, everything gets emptied out. Um, if you have the ability, some people will live in paycheck to paycheck, you don't have the ability to stock up on essentials, I understand that, but if you do have the ability and you have the space at home to stock up on some essentials, just, you know, gas might be one of them to have a couple tanks. We're seeing these events, folks, that we kind of just uh, became complacent with having basically the necessities of life. As in, I try and have, especially when the newborn in the house, got a newborn, turned three months old, almost a week ago now, um, have some water in there, right? You have a few cases, you just keep them in your garage or something like that, so you have a few cases. Um, you know, everybody rushes out during hurricane season and we're coming into hurricane season in Florida. They get their water, um, there's a big shortage, there's lines of gas tanks. If you have the ability, folks, stock up a little bit. Don't hoard, you know, the, the, all that craziness that happened during COVID. But it was kind of a little bit of a wake up saying, yeah, you know, water is what we need to live. Why do we run out and everyone doesn't know if they're going to have water during a hurricane? Why doesn't everybody just throw a few bottles of water in their garage to make sure that they have some some cases of water or something like that? So pay attention to that. And if you can do it, because it gives you some peace of mind. Floridians, hurricane season, get some water so you don't have to rush out and get water if we're going to get a hurricane. And uh, make sure you fill up on some gas, too, because that one's likely to last through the weekend. And we might see some shortages depending on where you are. That pipeline running from Houston up portions of the East Coast. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. It's going to be an interesting one. We got the S&Ps down 39 points. Basil Chapman's coming up next.